feels good to ship stuff. All right. <laughs> This year we saw some huge updates and new features from the Webflow Conf keynote. So let's quickly go through and look at everything that is new and updated within Webflow. But before we do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of a drink of water. So Webflow got a new logo and it works pretty well. Uh, the word mark is a little bit too Google for my liking, but with the icon, I think it works really well. It's not an update that's gonna change anyone's life, but it's easy to screw up a logo update. So it's nice to see Webflow do it well. Uh, they actually spend all of the rest of the marketing budget for 2023 just on their introduction animation and uh, it's definitely worth it. The dashboard and the designer have a completely new look and when you open up the designer, the new loading screen feels very retro 80s Atari, which is super satisfying. And then when you get into the designer, everything has been changed as well. Uh, apparently the new interface has billions of added pixels. Almost trillions. My dad just asked me, why not trillions? and the new design system works super well. It feels really fresh, and there's only been a couple of things moved that will make the designer easier to use. I'll probably keep going up to the top left to preview my design for the next couple of weeks, but all in all, an awesome update. 3D. So now there's a native spline integration inside the designer, so you can import a spline scene and then map the 3D to a user movement or action, which is super cool and will probably give me, as with everyone, more of a reason to try out 3D and see how far we can actually take it. Spline does feel like a big deep dive, so if you haven't tried it out, give it a go with some of the starter projects first. Localization that was announced last year now has some added features that will make it easy to use. The ability to translate an element just with a right click. Or I can go to the body and translate the entire thing to French. And then you can even do the same thing to the CMS and to the meta information of each page. So great update. And this also means that there's a huge opportunity to go back to previous clients, offer to translate their website into something else, do it in like three seconds and then charge 10K for it. Variables is a huge change to the Webflow designer that will make it way easier to use and maintain systems inside of a project. And this is a feature that you can already see working inside of the Webflow designer because our color swatches are now hiding inside of the variables tab. And we can also add a whole bunch of different styles as variables, including headings, spacing, fonts, even border radius. I see this as having the potential of being the new way of doing style guide pages in the future, since a lot of the same information can now live inside of variables. And you can also map variables to interactions, and the examples of how far you can take it is pretty insane. Uh, I've been loving the new Bluey album. Custom properties, nice little updates, you can now curve text around a planet. And components have some new updates, so now they're more flexible with component slots. I uh, don't know if I'll use this yet, but it's nice to see that they're more powerful. Hi everyone, how are we doing today? Some template designers are making over a million dollars a year. Well, I just made a video on this, so I'm not gonna talk about it, but one of my templates was used for one of the screens during the conference, so check it out, Dad. There are also more Webflow apps now. Wise has its own app. You can add a picture of wine inside the designer with Unsplash, Memberstack, HubSpot, and the more apps Webflow gets added to it, there becomes less and less of a reason to still be using WordPress. So I'm excited to see what apps we're gonna get next. I was still waiting for a Subway Surfer app to play inside the designer, but hopefully that should be coming soon. The Figma to Webflow app is now supercharged, and now components in Figma can sync up with Webflow at the click of a button, and then inside of Webflow, you can review and accept those changes. There are also a bunch of updates for developers using Webflow with DevLink. Let's see if I remember how to use a mouse. Uh, native commenting inside the designer launch recently, and we also saw a quick update on branching pages. But there were a couple of things that I was surprised to see not updated in any way this year. E-commerce and Webflow is great, but there's definitely ways that it could be improved. I would love to see more small updates to the checkout so we can have native cart abandonment and more customization with the emails that are sent through Webflow. Our memberships is another one. When I was first playing around with its features, I was surprised that you could lock a full CMS collection, but not just the individual items within a CMS collection, or the ability to preview a set number of items within a CMS collection before having to pay for a full account. Kind of like you would see on one of those new sites. And honestly, it would also be nice to have more native styling options for the Webflow slider and to be able to natively connect the slider to the CMS. So those are some little things that I'm hoping we might see updates for in the future. So that's a summary of all of the new stuff that we saw from the Webflow Conf 2023 keynote. A bunch of big updates to make using Webflow that much better. Some stuff we didn't see and shoes. Thank you so much, Emily. What about Emily's shoe game? I don't know if I can do better than that. Um, see you on the next one.